Kelt in, and welcome to Pandora. The release of Avatar The Way of Water will see the introduction of a new Nadi clan on Pandora, that being the water based Metakayan. While their full background hasn't been revealed yet, and will probably be fleshed out in the film and its visual dictionary, I wanted to go through what we do know of them so far, and how they will play a part in the sequel. Based off concept art and the first trailer, we know that the clan make their home on the coastlines of one of Pandora's seas, in the reefs of the planet. They have an affinity with the ocean and water, and seem to use the environment to their advantage. The main way we see this so far is their ability to ride Ilu and other native oceanic life on the moon seas. Their leader is Tonowari, the Olo Ektan of the clan. He leads the clan with his wife, Tasik Ranal, and is said to exude a fierce demeanour. We know he is well respected by his clan, and that his decision to give sanctuary, or Uturu in Navi, to Jake and his family fleeing from a threat will be something he wrestles with during the film. The clan's main settlement is known as Marui, and will be built into the large roots of the mangrove-like trees that grow on the coastline of Pandora. Their homes hang above the water, and are guarded by massive seawall terraces. The Metakayan will have a strong bond to the Tolkans, large sentient whale-like creatures that inhabit the moon's oceans. Through this bond, members of the clans are able to communicate with the creatures, and see them as siblings, with each member of the clan having a Tolkan brother or sister. A tradition of the clan is to decorate their skin with tattoos, which are all unique to the individual and chronicle the events from their life. The locations of these tattoos also carry symbolic meaning, such as arm tattoos representing the protective shield of the clan's sea wall. A hunter of the sea would generally have more on their arms than on their chest. The tattoos are seen as gifts from Ewa and are created from the inks of local creatures. A member of the clan receives their first tattoo after they've completed all of their rites of passage into adulthood. In a similar way to the Omatakayan, the Metakayan have a number of coming of age rituals which must be completed before becoming an adult. These are known as the Igni Maya, one of which involves bonding with a skimwing, in a similar way to how the Omatakayan bond with an Ikran. Once a member of the clan has completed these rituals, they are bestowed with a special garment and free beads for their song cord. While the Metakayan are generally peaceful, they can defend themselves and will protect the seas from any threat they perceive, which leads us to their role in the film. It seems that the threat that Jake and his family are running from is far more than just the RDA Special Forces unit of avatars, known as Recon. As the preview page for the film's visual dictionary shows, humanity has established a far greater presence on the moon than in the previous film. Named Bridgehead, this city-sized complex will be humanity's forefront of colonization efforts on the moon, having now targeted Pandora as a replacement for Earth. While the complex is far heavily defended on its landward side, it also contains an industrial port and several docks for moving materials in and out during construction. The complex will be in the process of being built in the film, and will be ripping the natural resources of the sea to do it. I believe Jake will attempt to rally the Metakayan into attacking the complex to stop the threat before it can become real, and to limit the damage to the environment it's causing, perhaps by using their knowledge of the sea to their advantage, in a similar way to how he used the magnetic fields of the Hallelujah Mountains to ambush the RDA in the first Film. No doubt the clan may be reluctant at first, wanting to keep their peaceful ways until the threat is made real for them, which several shots from the first trailer could be hinting towards. We know that the threat that is following Jake and his family will be hunting them, so it's possible that they might bring the threat to the shore of the clan in the first place. Either way, the clan will be the central focus of the film, and no doubt will play a lasting part in the conflict against humanity on the moon. Maybe we could even see them reappear in the sequels. But what do you think of the clan? Are you excited to find out more about them? And how do you think they will fit into the film's narrative? I can't wait to read all your thoughts in the comments below. But until then, hey Alvai, give me.